Hi everybody! Welcome to the second part of how I manage our budget at home. In this video, I will be showing you how I set up my simple and straightforward budget spreadsheet for beginners. I like using my iPad so I do use a spreadsheet app but it actually looks and works like Microsoft Excel. If you like to use your tablet or smartphone, I'm sure there are similar spreadsheet apps that will work. Before I start, please note that I will be setting up my spreadsheet based on the following information for demo purposes. First, I will be using this budget list from part 1. Second, I'll assume that I get paid every Friday of each week. Third, I allot the necessary weekly amounts for my expenses every Friday once I'm paid. Fourth, budget for weekly expenses will cover the week from Friday to Thursday. Fifth, to keep things simple, I will assume that all my money are in one cash card. And sixth, today is the 20th of May. So now let's look at the spreadsheet. The first things that I like to see at the top are the total cash in card or the total amount of money that I have and the extra slash limit which I referred to in part 1. Since the numbers for both of these items will keep changing, I will be using a simple summation formula here later. Just below would be the actual changes in card section where I will be noting down every amount that goes in or out of my cash card on any particular day. And over to the right would be the allotted budget still in card section where I will list down all my expected expenses including savings. In the actual changes in card section, since I am just starting to set up my file, I will put the total amount of money I have in my card which I will label as starting amount under today's date. Let's just say that I have 500 pounds. Over to the allotted budget still in card section, I will put all the expected expenses that I listed on my budget list and determine the amount that I should already have allotted for them by this time in relation to their due dates. The gas heating, electricity, and grocery are all weekly expenses, so the amounts that I have to indicate for them are pretty straightforward. If I haven't spent anything yet for any of these three items for the current week, then I simply copy the values that I listed down previously, which are £20 each for gas and electricity, and £50 for grocery. The rent, landline, internet, and mobile phone credits are all monthly expenses, so I have to determine how much I should already have allotted for each item by this time in relation to their due dates. To do this, I simply find out how many paydays I have left before a due date. I then multiply this number to the weekly allotment that I listed in my budget list. Once I know that, I then deduct this number from the monthly amount that I would normally pay. Let's take a look at the rent for example. If it's due on the 1st of June and it's the 20th of May now, then I only have two paydays left to complete the amount that I need for rent. So it's going to be two times my weekly allotment of 100 pounds, which equals to 200 pounds. I then deduct the 200 pounds from the monthly rent of 400 pounds, which equals to 200. Therefore, by this time, I should already have 200 pounds allotted for rent. So, I just used the same method for the landline, internet, and mobile phone credit. I should already have £7.50 for landline and the same amount for internet, which are both due on the 31st of May. And I don't need to allot anything yet until the next payday for mobile phone credit, which is due on the 15th of June. As for the savings, I will just assume that I have been saving for 2 weeks now, which equals to £20. Lastly, for fare, there's only one day left before payday, so I only need £3. If you noticed, I've written down all these values as negative numbers. This is very important because how the numbers are written will affect the results of the formulas that I will use. It is important to remember to write any amount that goes into the card such as salary or any amount received as positive numbers and any amount that leaves or are expected to leave the card along with savings should be written as negative numbers. 
Next, somewhere here, I will just put in a summation formula to get the total amount I have allotted for my expenses. Simply write it by starting with an equal sign, then sum, and then the cell range and close in parentheses. So I basically want to start adding from the first value on cell E8 up to, let's just say, E100. But really, you want it to be up to the last row on column E. That way, if more items are added in this section, they will all be included. Then, I will use the same formula for the total in cash card, except the cell range covered will be from cell B8 up to the last row on that column. At this point, obviously, the value that will appear should match my starting amount. For the extra slash limit, I will simply add together the total in cash card and my total allotted budget for expenses still in card. I say add simply because since my allotted values are negative numbers, they will automatically be deducted when added to my total in cash card. As you can see, even though I have 500 pounds in my cash card, I can really only spend 172 pounds if I wanted to splurge because I have 328 pending bills to pay. Once this is set up, it is quite easy to update. So say I decided to top up my gas heating today, I just add it here and put negative 20 here. Then delete the amount from the allotted section because it is no longer in the card. The same if I purchase my grocery for 40 pounds, just write negative 40. And then on the other side, take out 40 pounds from 50, which will leave 10 pounds that is still in the card. Notice that the amount in card changes, but not the extra slash limit since these are expected expenses. If I take out 50 pounds to purchase something else, I simply write it here as well and this will affect the extra slash limit value since this is an unexpected expenditure. If payday comes and I got paid 250 pounds, I will note that here as a positive number. Then on the other side, I will top up my allotted budget based on the weekly values I have on my budget list. Again, the other stuff will all be updated automatically. And that's it. Just keep in mind that to ensure the accuracy of this file, always cross-check the amounts with your cash card and bank statements which are usually accessible online to make sure that they match. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and if you like this one, give it a thumbs up and share.